WWE Monday Night Raw. It's back at the Romo Fijo Monday night, June the 19th. Go to rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com for the details. And take it to all that. Get my last pair this week. Good luck. WWE Monday Night Raw in June. Caller 10. These tickets are yours. Have fun. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Don't worry. Spring is hiding just around the corner. And so is Pound Cake. Let me watch you poop. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Watch if you like at alancoxshow.com. Leave us voicemails on the Alan Cox Show after hours line. It's always available to you. It's been working most of the week. It is 216-986-8903. Alan, Cam, we can't been listening on the podcast. Uh, I've been keeping uh, diligent notes in my official Alan Cox Show log. Uh, and looking back through the notes, it seems like we're real, real lean on Dick. Uh, should we be concerned that this is like a Rick scenario? Because I don't know that we can lose mm. another absolute legend calling of Dick and all of his amazing hot music takes. Mm. Uh, also, could you hit the post on anything from Earth, Wind, and Fire? Love you, bye. Earth, Wind, and Fire. One hundred point seven WMMS. Brandy Sog here from Earth, Wind, and Fire. A side project of uh, fire, heat, and dirt from uh, Elgin, Illinois. This one's called Let's Groove on the Buzzard. Hey, Dick. Alan and Bill and uh, Sound Cake and Mary, how are you? You know, uh, Dick, people are calling because they are worried. Oh, that... wait a minute, wait a minute. Alan, um, listen, yes, listen sir. to me. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. This is what happens. I want you to know, you, Bill, and Mary, she came down to see me. I just wanted to say something that I am asking you, Bill or Mary or your production or any of your fans, this summer, and you can take pictures of me and put them on there. For something, but I just want to say something. Somebody, Elliot Earing was a producer with you guys, and I was sick a little bit last week. But one of the guys asked me, and I didn't want him to send pictures. But this is what I feel: that you guys have been loyal to me. You're good people, but I want want you guys to come down like Bill or Mary again sometime, or so I can play for you guys, and you can take pictures. I think it's only fair. I mean that from my heart, Alan. Right. Fair, I really do. F- fair to us, you mean? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, I mean, you came down. Mary got me the shirt. Yep. You put me on there. You've, you've let me call in. I thank your producer. I appreciate this. But one thing I got to say, my family was from Cleveland. My lower T. That's why I call, you know, my cousin and everything. Yep. But I love it to you guys give, come yep. down here to see Loyalty. me and show me your concern. And I just want to know that I am a, a fan of the Alan Cox show. Well, and Dick, I mean that from and, my and, heart. And Dick, I appreciate that. But, but wait a minute. I, wait. Was just, I was just starting to say that we had callers worried that we hadn't heard from you in a while. And after we lost Rick last year, there were some callers yeah. make it, try, just making sure that you were okay. Yeah, I am. Okay. But see, it's not fair. It's not fair to Mary or you and Bill. See, if I go, a friend of mine wanted to pick me up, you know, and he's given me a lot of stardom, like you guys. But Bill came down. Mary came down. I still think I owe it to you guys to come and, and, and be a fan of yours in God. I mean that so hardly, Alan, from my heart. Well, and I and whatever you're saying, Dick, I appreciate it. I'll take it in the spirit in which I assume it's being given. And, um, yeah. and okay, well, again, I, I just, when I saw you on hold, I was like, well, that's good news because, uh, it had been brought to my yeah. attention that, uh, you will have me listen, no, Bill, no, right? you will have me as a friend up there till my death because you wow. guys have been What's good that? to me. You, uh, the, the station has been good. And I want you guys to, you know, if Bill comes or something, I, I can give you a couple things, uh, you know, I can get you stuff, but I just want you to know that your program director, you know, I think I should send more cards that I'm loyal to 
you be a you know, it, a road and, and everything like that. I mean that from my heart. Well, I and I and I appreciate that. Where's all this coming from? Did you have a brush with death or what? Well, this is what happened. Uh, one of my friends, he's from, uh, he's from, um, oh, it's up north, okay. Mm-hmm. And there's a guy that I've called like you for. He, he we went down to his bar. And he took some pictures. And now I don't know if you knew Elliot. He worked up there, and he wanted to send you guys pictures. But I told him it would only be fair to me, Alan, that you know I I send you guys stuff, you know, and not you know favor. I'm a big guy, art radio fan here in Ohio. But you guys have meant a lot to me, and I think I owe you know for you guys to come down and, and you know if come up and, and, and play and, and something like that because I, I feel see. that your producer, your pro, Mary, you and guys are a good pretty. people up there and my friends in God and go I think go he means Browns our program get, director. Yep. Dick, mm-hmm. Dick I, I, yes. want, I want to be very clear in public about this. You don't owe us anything. Yes. You don't owe us anything. Okay. And that's all I'm saying. I mean, you can I, you don't even, whatever you're sweating, don't sweat it. You, we, I appreciate that you're a fan. You don't owe us anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, you know, uh huh. And I appreciate you guys. Well, I just wanted to confirm that nothing, uh, that no bad fortune befell you, Dick, since a couple of people oh, okay. brought it to my attention that we hadn't heard from you for a while. Uh, but, yeah. um, I mean, I, I assumed that you were probably uh, calling other shows and maybe we're busy. You know, post retirement, you're a very busy guy. And I appreciate what Mary, you know, giving me that shirt and bill. You don't know how much I'm thankful for that. You I think lost that's the one that I bought you. God, Alan. Huh? Didn't I, I bought you but one a few years ago. I don't want you guys to think I'm going to forget you. Well, I, I, love I, you guys. I, I never would. Love you too, Dick. Just take care of yourself, all right? Okay, and I'll keep in touch, okay? All right. Don't be a stranger, Dick. Well, okay. Thank all you. All right. There you go. There's Dick. In Dayton. Licky, 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 boom, boom, down. What did I miss? Right? I don't know. What did I miss? I don't know what the hell that was. He was, he, uh... I was afraid for a second. I put my headphones on quick AF because I was like, oh my gosh, does he have like a diagnosis or something? I was waiting for that. He, he was, uh... He was offering his, uh, unfailing loyalty to this fiefdom I've got here. And, yeah, I don't know what that is. I mean... Probably had to wrap it up so he could call Bloom Daddy or something. So <laughs> he ain't you know. loyal. Well, no, no. Listen, he's Dick has been. Uh, this guy started calling me as soon as I came to Cleveland. I didn't even know who he was, and people started to blow me up. Oh my God, this guy calls everybody. And now he's calling you too, and that's fine. But he doesn't owe me anything. That's silly. Bill's met him. Mary has met him. You and I haven't. I like to keep things uh, professional. Listen, I invited Dick to our 10th anniversary show. Right? I invited our regular callers at the time. I invited Rick. I called them each personally. I invited Rick. I invited Dick from Dayton. I invited Drunk Sue. I invited someone else. I forget who that was. And they all declined, which is perfectly fine. Maybe they were sheepish about it or whatever. Drunk Sue was the only one who showed up to our 10th anniversary show in 2019. But um, that's because there was a party going on, and it was it was fine to see her. But I invited Dick that one time, and he declined, and that's fine. But he doesn't owe me anything. <clears throat> but, yeah, you're right. I was waiting for something to happen there. And I, I mean, it was uh, a very strange call. Yeah. That's why I thought maybe he had a, maybe he had a brush with death. Maybe he uh, took ill last week or something, and he started to see hallucinations. Maybe he he woke up and didn't know where he was, and he's... Uh, speaking of that, speaking of hallucinations, I had a very vivid dream last night. It creeped me out to the point where I woke up and, like, made sure I had to check myself. I was only getting wild with myself. Check yourself? Before you wreck yourself, you mean? So, my roommate is... And I, don't, and I didn't tell him this because I didn't see him this morning because he leaves before I wake up, but... Uh, my roommate ha- is getting ready to move in with his girlfriend because uh, she just got a house. So I, I, I'm either going to be moving out of my place or staying. Taking a lover? Taking a lover. <laughs> to split the rent. Sure. Or, or you know, but I, I <laughs> you're, might, gonna, you're probably going to be moving is what you're trying I might, to say. I might be moving or I'm just going to buy this uh, 
rent this place on my own. I've never lived on my own, but I kind of like my location. Okay. Uh, but, it's a good spot. But, is it it's something you, you can afford? Month, if you don't mind me asking. You don't have to tell. You, you say what? How much would you pay if it was just you? Like 900 You yeah. can do that. You pay 450 a month now? Mm-hmm. Jesus, what a life. Man, I know, right? Life. That's, God, but that's, why, that's why we have roommates. I'm supposed to. <laughs> no, supposed I understand. No, I get it. I got other things now, now that I have like Good a for car you. note and stuff. But yeah. like, um, that's the whole point. But yes, yeah, so I probably could do it on my own. It's just living matter. with yourself. Living by yourself is priceless. Well, it is worth paying twice the rent. Well, the, that's the thing. I, like if I go somewhere else, I my rent is probably going to go up because I don't know. All you'd have places, to find another roommate. You'd have to, the only or place, you'd have to try and find a place cheaper. Which I don't know if you're going to find a place. That's what I'm saying. All the places I've cheaper. lived, uh, ex- the only place I've lived that has been above a thousand dollars was with Gay Bay, and that was we split it three ways. So I was okay with that. It was, it was. I think Gay Bay was like twelve fifty or thirteen hundred a month. It was a financial three way. Is what he's trying to say, Bill. Yay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that was a certain time in my life where I was like, okay, well, I got two other people, and we all chipped in for food. But getting that's besides the point. So I, last night, had a very vivid dream that I was tossing off with the door open. <laughs> and Which you can do if you live by yourself. Yep. That's what I'm saying. You can do it in any <laughs> room of the saying. house. That's why he woke up. He's like, I either have to murder my roommate or see to it that he moves in with his girlfriend. I, I, with I, the quickness. Yeah. Yeah, I had a dream last night that I was tossing off, watching porn with the door open, and my roommate walked in and saw, and like, it, it just made things really awkward. Like, it, it, I don't, I don't remember too much. I, I just remember him walking in, looking into my room, and then going to his room because he has to walk past my room to get to his room, and he didn't say anything. But then once I realized that he saw, I got up and closed the door. And were you still going while you <laughs> got up to close the door? <laughs> like duck walking. In- <laughs> I don't remember, but it was one of those vivid dreams where you feel everything. So I felt like when I got up, I felt like myself getting up and then the wind blowing on my private parts. <laughs> like, you know, the, the gust of wind where you're like walking around naked. So then I woke up. I was like, oh. so I, my hand was in my pants, <laughs> but <laughs> but my door was closed. So I'm like, I don't know if I was sleepwalking and he really did see me. So I have to ask when I get home because I didn't. This was last night, so I was like, I don't know if it really. Hey man, happened. you walked by my room when I had my hands in my pants and I was asleep. I don't know if it really happened or if I was lucid dreaming, but I'm like, this is the type of stuff that I don't want to live alone for because then I'm gonna be like, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, uh, what type of dreams am I gonna have if I'm by myself? I'm just gonna be walking around nude and it's gonna be the norm. So then I'll just answer the door like, oh wait. Yes, living by yourself's the best. Mm. The best. I already, I already pooped with the door open, and he scared me one day because. Well, that's just gross if you have other people in the house. Well, he was, go- he works like he, he leaves in the morning. Yeah. But he doesn't report to me if he has like a day off or he calls off or whatever. So last Friday, <laughs> last, <laughs> last like cracking himself last, up over this. Last Friday, I was at work, like I was working in the kitchen because I just set my laptop laptop on there and he comes walking through I was like, ah! <laughs> like he scared me I'm like dude you have to let me know when you're home because I'm in there pooping with the door open I'm playing music loud like, I'm living as if I live here by myself mm-hmm. so if you don't want to see nothing give me a warning because <laughs> I didn't know he was home don't say nothing won't be nothing it smells like the devil pinched off a loaf in here mm. but that was a very traumatic dream well, you're laughing a lot about it. it doesn't sound too traumatic. <laughs> Seems have... like it spurned you to get your own place. Well, I'm. That's one one part of it, and two, I just have to make a move back to prospect. You could be throwing more than hands. I I wouldn't mind going back to that place there now that I know, now that I know how to appreciate it. I mean, hell, I according to you guys, it was a downtown place with a parking spot included. Yeah, you were on the east side. Yeah. So now that I would actually have time to appreciate it and I wouldn't be a minimalist anymore. All right, so the TLDR on this is that Pound Cake uh, had a dreamer he's whacking off. And he wants to live alone. Mm -hmm. So he can do it for real. With unbridled, with reckless abandon. He wants to make his dreams come true. He wants to be running through his house, one hand uh, on himself, another hand uh, doing God knows what. I've only been caught. I have a burrito in the other hand or something. I've only been caught tossing off Twice. I never got caught. I got caught. Well, I, I did, they didn't see me tossing off, but they saw me looking at porn. Like, my mom caught me one time, and then the other oh. time, uh, 
A ghost caught you once. <laughs> a, a human being. I'm talking about human being. Okay. Oh. The other one was when I was at Gay Bay. There were no boundaries. There was no. You can't walk into a room when when we're having private moments. And my my friend walked in and like I had my headphones in, so I didn't hear him. He just walked in, and I, my head was turned the opposite way. And so he stood there for a minute. And then when I got done, and we're having dinner, and I'm walking downstairs, he's like, "Did you wash your hands?" <laughs> he's, he's like, "Did you wash your?" I'm like, "Yeah, why?" He's like, "That that porn that you were watching was pretty hot." I'm like, "Oh, dude, pretty hot." Like this is this is why we need to establish boundaries as roommates. He's like, "Oh, please." Yeah, right. Yes, I'm cheating on you, Ghost What the hell is going on around here, Pancake? You know who this is? I know who it is. I'm pretty frustrated. It's Ghost Bag. Yes, Ghost Bag, that's right. I have been gone for a minute. I gotta do my own thing, too. Mm -hmm. And I come back, and I hear you talking about... I had a dream, and I was whacking off, and now I'm (laughs) on my own place. Who do you think was giving you them dreams, dummy? Well, that's not fair. Don't be. I I have anxiety. You can't be doing stuff like that because I anxiety, woke up screaming in a cold sweat. Anxiety. No. <laughs> anxiety. Come on, man. Who do you think is putting them dreams in your head? I am. If you were doing what you were supposed to be doing, then this would never have happened. It's time for us to get our own place, son. It's time. You're a grown ass yes. man. You should be running around your own house, whacking it wherever you want. And make things easy for you. In the stove, on the sink, in the fridge, in the fireplace. Yeah, that's right. Your little place had a fireplace. Ooh, a fireplace. I'm cool with that. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Think about it. All the things that we could be doing hanging out together. I'd be hiding. You wouldn't know I was there, but it's your house. You can do whatever you want to, baby. (laughs) All right, well, I'm working on it, but in the meantime... Be, take it easy on me. Don't How be doing that. How many more dreams do I have to give you? I don't know. I've been trying to send these uh, messages to you, and you're just not picking up on it. Come on, man. Well, it takes me a minute. Yeah, it sure does. I was watching you while you slept. It took you more than a minute. Well, you're cruel. <laughs> I'm not cruel. I'm just looking out for your best interest, Pancake. That's all I but want. You're looking out for your best interest. Of you want. I am. You want to see me? My interests are your interests, dummy. No, you want me in a compromising position. You mean like the back of a Volkswagen? It's not the joke. <laughs> Hi, what? Who it's is an that? uncomfortable place. I don't, who is that? I don't know. Who the hell is it? <laughs> no. All right, I don't know. Anyway, Pancake, I was just checking in. Get your own place, sucker. I'm working on it. It's ta- working on it? You're like 40. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm not 40. <laughs> Screw you. All right, well, I'm just work on it, okay? All right. All right. I'll All be right. watching. I know. Right. Now, some people need a push. A little pound cake needs a push to get his own place, maybe. But. Boy, the living is easy, whether it's summertime or otherwise, when you're by yourself. It's not too shabby at all. I got to take a break here. I will have those Adam Sandler tickets for you for people who have been hitting me up.